Hello everyone. Welcome to the FME and CityWorks training course. My name is Ryan. I'll be your host for today. I'll be handing you over to your presenter, Nathan, in just a few moments. Nice. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, yeah, Nathan here. Welcome to the FME and CityWorks training. Super excited to deliver this. Uh, I like this training a lot. CityWorks is a really uh, strong technology integration, uh, provides a great avenue to get into application integration more generally with FME as well. So uh, I hope that uh, we're able to provide you with some, some great tools to enable success with your projects. And you can kind of think of this training as well as a, a brain dump of what Safe Software knows about how to use FME with CityWorks. Uh, and then expanding on that, kind of how to use FME to integrate with any other application with web services or a REST API. We'll also work with databases a little bit too. So yeah, a lot of the key concepts we'll cover here can be applied to you know other systems, other use cases as well, not just FME and CityWorks. Just a quick intro here. So I'll be your trainer throughout the course. I've been at SAFE for about three and a half years. I'm actually an FME server technology expert. I've started out on the desktop side of things and I've got a bit of a platform perspective going on here. And I work uh, quite a bit with technology partners like CityWorks, as well as quite a few local government customers and prospects too. Um, so I'm a little bit embedded in this uh, domain of integration solutions, I'd say, for small to medium enterprises uh, using FME. Here are the broad strokes of what we'll cover over the next eight hours of training. So day one, we'll do some introduction and groundwork in just a moment, talking about the FME platform kind of in general at a high level, uh, integration with CityWorks, a little bit about how FME fits into the landscape of other software. Uh, just an overview of our partnership with CityWorks. Uh, we'll throw some breaks in approximately every hour, take a 10 minute break. We'll talk about practical applications of FME Workbench, do a couple of exercises there, and do the same thing for FME Server. On day two, we'll do a quick recap of today's um, content. And then the rest of the day tomorrow will be more of a, a hands-on sort of workshop, self-guided. Um, I've got two sort of longer form scenarios that we can spend most of the day uh, working on. It's a little bit of a different format. Tomorrow versus today, shorter exercises, a bit more uh, of me talking. Depending on your familiarity with FME, you might find some topics and exercises to be a bit of a review, but I'm hoping some will be a challenge too. Uh, we'll cover quite a broad range of things. Just a sort of look at the learning objectives here. So we've got platform positioning. So I hope that you'll learn how to talk about and sort of think about the FME platform in general, how to talk about it to uh, you know, colleagues or your organization or customers. Um, that includes also how our technology fits into the enterprise and why it matters, what the power is. Core platform capabilities. Um, so we'll look at how to configure and use FME for both data and application integration. So this includes things like uh, controlling workflows with uh, automations in FME server as well as how to work with the actual uh, data and the logic in FME desktop. And authoring solutions. So we'll look at how to create FME solutions to common enterprise integration patterns uh, and with a focus on CityWorks, of course. Okay, let's get started with an overview of the FME platform. 
to provide some context for what FME is, why it matters, especially in a CityWorks context. FME is a framework from which solutions can be built. Uh, it's like a modern, manageable, sustainable platform that gives our customers a simple solution for complex integrations. It tends to eliminate reliance on custom code and database integrations whenever possible. Uh, that's through using things like you know, web services, more of a service-oriented architecture. Uh, but we do also provide strong database level tools. Uh, I know those are sometimes still needed, uh, even for application integration scenarios. It's also possible to perform quality control, QAQC with FME, data validation, things like that. FME Server, of course, provides automation and notification capabilities. So we often categorize these uh, sort of you know, features of FME into the broader strokes of connecting to data sources, transforming data, and automating those workflows. Besides that trio of connect, transform, and automate, we can also talk about FME in terms of formats supported, over which I think there's about over 400 or 500 at this point, functionality provided by transformers, or industries we support and work in. But uh, SAFE as a company and FME as a, as a technology or platform uh, move more and more towards the notion of enterprise integration. And as such, it starts to make more sense to talk about FME in terms of patterns of solutions, the two main ones being data integration and application integration. And just looking at the, the screenshots on this, this slide here, um, you know, we, we tend to think about or talk about FME server automations here, which is pictured as the sort of application integration piece, and desktop, which is this larger image here, FME desktop or workbench as the data integration piece. This is a slide that we like to show a lot at, uh, at SAFE, it just sort of shows the trajectory of the kinds of formats and spaces you know, our technology works in. You kind of see how we started in GIS and CAD and databases um, back in the, the mid-90s, uh, sort of with that data integration theme. And they kind of just expanded out from there to all kinds of different, uh, you know, formats, point cloud, you know, just cloud in general, web services. Uh, BI in here too, and, and machine learning. And I think it's not on this slide, but you know, towards the top there, I'd potentially throw in something like you know, IT integration, so application integration, you know, with with web and with you know, XML, JSON, IoT, just moving more into that you know, broader systems integration space. So what is data integration? You're probably familiar with you know, some of it, at least some of the familiar topics like ETL, uh, data interoperability, data silos, and so on. It's really what FME started out with and has built on over the years. The idea that data is worth nothing if it just sits there. Uh, we tend to define it as the creation, manipulation, and analysis of data which represents a significant challenge for a lot of contemporary organizations. Never before have we had so much you know, machine readable data. Organizations still struggle to find ways to use this mass of information to actually aid in decision making. So we, yeah, we tend to define integration, data integration as bringing together data from disparate sources in a unified view to create data sets with both valuable and usable information. I kind of like this slide. It's an abstracted view of FME Workbench. If you think about it, Workspace is 
are really this simple. Um, it's really just a few nodes, inputs, transformers, which transform the data and outputs. With uh, CityWorks integration, sometimes it's a little bit different than your typical reader input, transformer, writer output. Sometimes we'll use a creator transformer to trigger a workspace or consume data from a webhook coming from CityWorks, things like this. Uh, but this is the standard, the standard sort of abstract structure. So if data integration is where we started, application integration is the direction in which FME is, is moving largely. And to me, it's, it makes sense that we'd move in this direction because application integration itself still relies on data moving between systems or moving between departments in an organization. Here's an abstracted view of application integration. So in this example, uh, I've just shown, you know, where multiple systems like GIS data, CityWorks, uh, email notifications, really any other system you want to fit in here, finance, HR, other data warehouses, all of these systems need to be aware of each other and communicate with each other. And FME, uh, especially in this case, FME server can sit in the middle orchestrating all of this. So a little more formal definition of application integration is that it takes place at the application level, typically through web services or APIs. It's more of a service oriented architectural thing. In the wild database level integration still can factor into this in a lot of scenarios. REST APIs aren't always available for everything we want to do or they don't have the full breadth of capability. Synchronization is a really common scenario where an application like CityWorks need to be in, needs to be in lockstep with another system like a permitting system or GIS or maybe even HR. So primary goal here is to eliminate redundancy. And that could be of data uh, for you know problems like swivel chair operations, manually entering the same data into two systems. Uh, and where we had kind of a concept of data silos in the data integration sphere where data is locked away in a department or in a system. Um, you could think about application silos here as well. Uh, just trying to free the data from a single application and, and let it flow through the enterprise. So this is where FME fits in as a kind of middleware type uh, solution. Uh, sometimes ESB will be the term used, um, inter enterprise integration platform. Uh, really just orchestrating communication between systems and helping to resolve these problems. So how does CityWorks fit into this, you know, set of integration capabilities? How does it sort of work with FME? So we've been partners with CityWorks for, for some time now. Over the course of our partnership and through working with mutual customers, we've begun to identify some common use cases for FME and CityWorks integrations, some common kind of buckets of uh, scenarios. Those are problems that we hear again and again where FME can fit in and solve problems and relieve pain. I'll just highlight a few of these at a very high level and some actual projects completed by Safe Software and CityWorks that hit on these topics. Then we'll talk about how FME fits into the broader landscape of other integration solutions. Just touch on that briefly. So let's just run through these. So data integration. Here we're talking about those data migration efforts or legacy systems and uh, how FME can be used to bring both data and schema across those systems. Uh, web apps and forms, 
with FME Server, it's really easy to build no-code web front ends that users can navigate to in a browser and run really useful workflows without having to know anything about FME or that it's running behind the scenes. That's with FME Server apps. Of course, application integration, allowing those best fit for purpose systems to communicate with each other, uh, enabling those systems to interface with each other without custom coded uh, solutions. Notifications, things like emails being sent to notify stakeholders of, of workflows being run. Uh, email is just one example. Workflow automation, just the ability to model data flows in FME and have them run automatically based on triggers like webhooks or schedules, directory watches, message queue integrations, anything that runs a workspace without manual intervention. Reporting here too, since FME supports so many kinds of formats, it's easy to build your own simple report. Actually, you can do reports in FME too, but you can also connect to whatever business intelligence tool might already be in play, or at least write a format that's friendly to your BI tool. So just taking a look at some of these real examples of those integration patterns just mentioned there. The first example hits on web apps and for, has, hits on a few actually, application integration maybe as well, but web apps and forms is kind of the highlight. It's a, a citizen reporting app to take in service requests. Um, there's an aspect of contractors also being able to look at these and submit information on the request there's a status checker built into this for citizens to come back in, uh, check on their requests, and email notifications are integrated throughout. So it is an example of a lightweight, no-code way to uh, create something simple quickly that organizations can add to their, to their websites. And it's a live demo running at uh, safe.com slash demos. Uh, it's interactive. You can try it out. It's a demo completely based on web forms with FME uh, working under the hood. And yeah, it just takes you from that citizen reporting perspective through the contractor uh, perspective. And uh, there's also a complete you know, knowledge article on how that's all put together as well. So uh, we've shared the, the knowledge of how to put that together. Uh, Gerard is just asking a question there. Can we do an exercise to run FME server from CityWorks to build reports? That does kind of factor into some exercises that we'll get to uh, super quickly here. Uh, we'll just be building some simple HTML reports in FME. Um, but that's, uh, that's yeah, if you wanted to look at something more in depth, that'd be a great topic for for maybe a knowledge article for us or or another course. But yeah, we'll be doing some some basic stuff there. Just to move on here, we've got an example of a data migration solution. So this workspace comes directly from CityWorks. Um, just an example of taking some legacy data from a customer and using the CityWorks REST API to load that into a new CityWorks instance. And I believe this was about 10,000 work orders being migrated along with custom fields and entities uh, approximately 30, 30 different fields uh, migrated across, done with two different REST API calls, one to load the work order data initially, and another one to update its status with some, you know, some logic built into the workspace along the way. Testers and uh, some JSON uh, manipulation transformers to handle the responses from the uh, API requests. Another example here from CityWorks of just workflow automation. Uh, so this is a, the, the problem this solves is, you know, vegetation management around electrical assets. Um, so checking on, you know, what vegetation is, is uh, 
encroaching on electrical assets, what might need to be trimmed or removed or inspected. Um, CityWorks is in this mix handling all the uh, inspections and FME does the, um, actually does some of the, the GIS analysis and also automates um, the kind of reporting from the inspection to some of the CityWorks tickets that, that are created. Um, it wasn't possible for them to do this um, completely with, I think, within CityWorks uh, with a, a webhook and a REST API call sort of thing. So they needed to reach out to FME and have FME sit in the middle and orchestrate this. Um, and the automation that you kind of get out of this in FME server is really simple. It's really two, two nodes here, just a trigger, webhook trigger, and a workspace running. So the green is the webhook and the orange is the workspace running. And the workspace itself below here, quite simple as well. Um, parsing the webhook is in purple. Uh, in teal in the middle is a bit of logic. Uh, just a tester to filter. And then the green is a, a REST API call to CityWorks. Just a really you know repeatable pattern. You'll see that come up again and again if you're using FME to work with CityWorks. So yeah, just to recap there, um, return to those broad use cases for a moment. So just to note, FME supports all of these. You probably know some other tools or have encountered some that might support some of these as well. Uh, I would say that FME's advantage here is that it's an all-in-one tool that hits each and every one of these use cases. Um, other integration software often provides some of these functionalities, but maybe only one or two of these use cases, maybe just a few. Uh, one of the main differences being that FME competes in both that data integration and application integration product category, uh, which you don't find with all other sort of integration solutions. They might be data or application. And just to kind of show that again visually here. So um, yeah, the market can be difficult to navigate. You know, tools in this space of application integration, data integration, often there's overlapping functionality. Many tools promise similar results. So that's kind of why these um, bubbles are overlapping in this slide here. A lot of the functionality you can find in FME can also be found in Analytics and iPaaS tools. Uh, so, you know, when you're looking at tools, it's important to understand what the use case is, what functionality you actually need to get into the right category of tools. Um, and FME is very clearly in kind of straddling these application integration and data integration spaces. Um, of course, being very strong in data integration where we started, but also improving application integration and, uh, you know, moving into that space in the future. So FME is typically an excellent choice if you have those standard ETL sort of data problems uh, to solve, but also require a bit of system integration, application integration. And of course we have, you know, the best support for spatial. So just another way that we kind of differentiate ourselves. Sorry, I should have shown this slide a minute ago. Just showing how FME straddles these two uh, circles in the middle, the application integration and data integration. So keep following me for a few more minutes, please. And I will just do a demo of a system check and just a kind of a quick platform uh, overview just for those of you who are new or maybe haven't used FME in a while. So keep following uh, the presenter for a moment and I'll hop over to uh, my lab. All righty. So I've got Workbench up here and I've just used the, it's just in the pin, should be pinned the taskbar at the bottom of your lab or it's in the start menu. Um, when you open it up, you'll get this screen Typically, I'll just click new right away to get into a blank uh, workspace. 
Um, so just to go, go over some of the common features, so the canvas in the middle here of FME Workbench, it's where all the action happens, essentially. Uh, we can add readers by, you know, even just typing format names into the canvas. So if I type Excel, I'll get a drop down. I can choose an Excel reader. Uh, same thing for transformers. Say I'm going to add an uh, let's see, HTML report generator. I can just type it in and select that from the quick add here. Same thing with, write with writers. Uh, for instance, yeah, HTML writer, which you'll see in the exercises a bit later. That's the canvas. And on the left, you'll see the navigator pane. This is where you can kind of manage readers, writers, um, you know, input data sets, source data sets for writers, destination uh, locations for outputs from writers, um, you know, any runtime parameters that go on in the workspace, uh, some settings for the workspace as well, kind of just a, a quick management tool for the workspace. Parameter editor, this will automatically show you the parameters for any transformers that you've got going on. The transformer gallery is here too, just another way to search for transformers uh, by categories, which can be useful, especially if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. So you can switch between those here at the bottom. Um, also, yeah, just FME options. So if you've got in the ribbon at the top, tools, FME options, this will factor into some exercises where you've got web connections going on or database connections. Those can be managed here. Um, not to go too into depth here, but just to be aware that it exists. Um, and you might not be able to see it on your cramped screens if they are cramped, uh, but there's a publish button to FME server in this ribbon here. You can also get to that from the file uh, dropdown. Uh, that's desktop. Let me just go over to my browser. So from a start menu, I've just gone to FME server and the FME server web interface. And I've opened that up in Chrome. So I've just gone here, FME server, FME server web interface. And I can just log in with my credentials, which are admin, capital FME lowercase learnings and then I should be able to get to my home screen this looks like it worked and from here just a quick rundown just to point out some of the tools on the left hand side um, this is you know obviously the home page for FME server we've got run workspace where we can select workspaces that live on our FME server and just run them with the click of a button so let me just select an example here and then parameters are here. I can configure, but they've got defaults and I can just click run. Uh, automations, which we'll work on a little bit later in the course uh, for orchestrating those, uh, you know, triggers and actions and notifications, um, responsive workflows. Schedules. You can ignore that for the most part. You can build schedules and automations as well. The schedules, uh, this individual schedules tab is for folks who have you know, tons and tons of schedules to manage, which some of our customers do. Jobs, if you're ever curious what's running, what's waiting to run, or queued, or what's already finished running, you can go here and take a look at what's going on on your FME server. Um, and server apps we'll look at in the exercise a little bit later as well. I won't go into, into detail here, but that's for building those no code front ends for workspaces, um, for sharing with folks who don't need to know what FME is essentially. And admin tools, which we won't really touch on in this course. There's an FME server administrators course, which you can take if you want to learn more about uh, security, user management, um, you know, upgrading, backups and restores, licensing, those sorts of things. Active Directory. 
And finally, I've grabbed my CityWorks IP address from my CityWorks virtual machine earlier, and I pasted that into the browser, and I've just appended CityWorks to that um, URL there. If you, so it's just IP address slash CityWorks, and uh, it might take a minute, but it should take you to the login page, and then uh, entering the credentials CWAdmin training one, and I'll share these credentials. They're on your machines. I'll share the path to the resources in just a, just a moment here. So it looks like that is working as well. And from here for today, um, looks like this is taking a minute to load. We'll get mostly into webhooks and things tomorrow. For today, the search bar is useful just for looking up work orders that we've kind of created in our workflows. Um, and yeah, that's uh, tomorrow we'll be more uh, using Action Manager and templates and things like that. For resources, uh, let me just chat out this path on your machine. This is where you can find uh, things like, let me just get this into my clipboard. This is for um, data sets used in workspaces. Uh, there's a credentials file here. Um, there's also some completed workspaces here for the exercises if you'd like to start from those or use them as a reference. Just note that some of them, uh, they probably won't work or run properly right out of the box. You might have to go go in there. I've left some notes for things to be configured. Um, just consult with the manual and then um, it should be, should be good. What if I don't have an FME data folder? Let me see. If you don't have a data folder, what can we do? Might be able to share that with you another way. So if you go to, oh great, yeah. So thanks Ryan, Ryan will grab a, uh, a download link just in case you don't have that on your local machine. Alrighty, so that's about it for my overview. Why don't folks take, uh, let's take 10 minutes, not to start the exercises, but just to do the same sort of system check, get familiar with your lab. Um, let's take 10 minutes and we'll check back here at, uh, let's see, 8.58 on your lab clocks. Oh, thanks, Banu, for the question. Uh, at what version is the web connection available? I believe it might be about 2019, although you can try in 2018. I don't know if web connections... Oh, yeah, there was a fix that went in to make that available. So I believe it's 2019.2. Um, I think that might be some, sometime in 2019. I can, I can grab the... Uh, the information for you and let you know exactly. All right, signing out for a moment. We're meeting back here at 8.58. All right, hi everyone. Just checking back in here as it's been uh, 10 minutes. Uh, does anyone have any issues uh, opening Workbench getting to FME server or CityWorks. <laughs> All right, uh, just, just for CityWorks, um, so for that, you'll need to just go up to 
actually, let me just go back in my slides here. If you follow a uh, presenter, um, so you'll just need to grab the IP, public IP from the CityWorks virtual machine, which is, I think it should be the second virtual machine in your drop down. Uh, going to the cog wheel to get that public IP. And then you'll have to use the, the clipboard. Might be a bit hard to see in the slides, but it's just next to the cog wheel uh, at the top uh, to paste that IP into the clipboard. Then going back to your main Ireland virtual machine uh, and opening a tab in the browser, pasting that IP in, and then adding slash CityWorks. And then you should be able to get there in your browser. Okay, just a, a really quick recap, just some of the things we looked at in Workbench. Uh, the canvas, where everything sort of comes together, readers, transformers, writers, uh, some of the menus and toolbars, uh, the navigator, which has kind of an overview of what's going on in the workspace, um, source data sets, destination data sets, parameters, those things, uh, the transformer gallery for browsing transformers, um, actually, I didn't touch on the log or the visual preview, but those are at, in the bottom pane of FME Workbench, and those will become more relevant uh, once you get into the exercises, and, you, and you'll see those. Those will um, appear automatically. You'll see the, the log, which logs everything happening in the workspace, and visual preview is where you can look and inspect the data as it sort of moves through the workspace. And for FME Server, just a quick look at running a workspace page, the automations page, uh, jobs, uh, a note on server apps, which we'll look at uh, in one of the FME Server exercises today, and uh, just other admin tools that we won't use in this course. Okay, it's about nine. So at the top of the hour here. So let's take uh, our first 10 minute break and then we'll meet back here at uh, 9, 12 on your lab clocks to go into more practical uh, workbench stuff. All right, so let's meet back here in 10. Okay, welcome back from the break, everyone. And let's go back into it here. If you'll just, uh, if you were in your labs, just click the follow presenter button again at the top uh, left. I've got a few more slides here and then we'll jump into the first exercise. Just a quick note here on the CityWorks partnership that uh, SAFE has. Um, it kind of all began when we did some work with a mutual customer. I think this was probably oh, about a year and a half ago or so. Uh, and from that, we got a few out-of-the-box integration solutions, kind of blueprints for working with the CineWorks REST API that we published to uh, FME Hub, which is a place, uh, like an online repository for um, sort of FME blueprints and transformers that aren't shipped with FME. And uh, yeah, it's proven to be a really great partnership, working a lot together with local government. Um, we work closely with them to share knowledge. Uh, so just continuing to build out more support for CityWorks and really to support uh, our customers who are, are working with both technologies. Let's start to dive into some more technical context for FME. Uh, just going over some of the key concepts and capabilities that we'll look at throughout the course. 
first thing I want to talk about, especially with respect to CityWorks integrations, is APIs. As we move forward to more cloud-based infrastructure, kind of generally, broadly, uh, and the benefits of you know, working with web services, this kind of technology is going to continue to grow and become one of the most powerful tools in our toolbox, I think, for us as software software vendors, but also, you know, for implementers, for uh, solutions architects, you know, for um, trainers as well. A REST API essentially allows a user to interact with the server by creating requests and receiving responses. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Not super, you know, important to know that, but just to know that these exist and this is what we're working with. Uh, so a REST API follows this kind of architecture. Um, it's got, uh, you know, a, a URL that you hit an endpoint to perform some action in uh, this application. Um, a, you know, API is a method of communicating programmatically with tools and functions already predefined and built. So that URL essentially leads you down a path to a built out tool in that software, a built out function. Um, JSON is very often the language of interchange in REST APIs, which we'll be working with. It's what is sent in a request and received back in the response from the application. It's lightweight and it's both human and computer readable. One of the reasons why it's used so widely over the web in general. And it's made up of keys which in FME speak, we can think of as attributes. Uh, fields would be another kind of uh, synonym, I guess, if you're thinking about it like a table. Keys and values, which are like attribute values in FME or those field values. In this example on the slide here, we've got a key a work order ID and we've got a value 43291. Same thing for WO task ID, work order task ID, and 42. And you can see too in this example, the work order ID is in quotation marks because it's a string. And the work order task ID is without quotation marks because it is a numeric value. Parsing is extracting chunks of those JSON keys and values and manipulating them into useful bits of information, often into more of a tabular view, at least in FME. Uh, FME is all about features, which are kind of like rows, attributes, which are kind of like columns. In FME, we generally extract keys and values into attributes and attribute values. Uh, each JSON object or list of these keys and values typ typically becomes a feature and we do this with a family of JSON transformers and uh, sometimes with a family of attribute manipulation transformers as well. Some of them are like JSON extractor, JSON fragmenter, um, attribute creator, attribute manager, attribute exposer. When you're working with REST APIs in FME, there are a number of things that you should be aware of to successfully build those requests. And uh, all of this will be kind of configured and outlined inside the HTTP caller transformer. So things like what method is being used. This depends on what you're trying to achieve in, in the REST API call. For example, are you bringing data down? Is it a GET request? Are you pushing it up? Is it a POST or a PUT? Um, what information needs to be passed into the request and how? Uh, this should be specif uh, specified in 
documentation. Some documentations are better than others at this, but uh, typically it'll outline things like any headers or query string parameters or request body that you might need. Um, and along with that comes, you know, authorization and authentication. What kind of authentication scheme does this REST API use? Is it a token? Is it username password? Is it something a bit more complex like uh, OAuth? Um, and for CityWorks, um, it's, uh, it's, tip, it's essentially token, but an FME will use a username and password to, to get that token and create that connection. And just to dive a bit deeper into that authentication piece, uh, many processes, including, you know, connecting with the CityWorks REST API, require you to connect and authenticate to a web service. So, for example, when you use an HTTP caller transformer, you might need to authenticate to a web service like CityWorks or even just, a, just an external web service getting data, um, Google BigQuery. Similarly, if you want to connect to an FME server instance from, from um, Workbench, you have to specify a set of connection parameters as well. There is a framework in FME for building and storing and saving these web connections uh, in a secure and manageable way so they can be reused. So each time that you need to specify those connection parameters or that auth authentication piece, you can just use the connection rather than re-entering it like re-entering your credentials over and over again. And if anything would happen to change, you can edit it in one place rather than in each place in the workspace where you use this connection. So in the screenshot, we can see part of the web service definition for CityWorks, from which we can create a web connection by entering our credentials. And database connections work similarly in FME as well. A note on custom transformers. Uh, we'll use one in one of the exercises. Um, it's really a way of wrapping up a sequence of regular old transformers into a single condensed transformer or piece that you can just add to your workspace. Uh, any sequence of transformers can be wrapped up into this custom transformer. And they can be shared by users across an organization, or they can be published to FME Hub. And that's what we've done with the out-of-the-box CityWorks custom transformers. Um, they really just allow you to reuse content that you might use over and over again, reuse you know, sequences of transformers. Um, tidy up workspaces is another way that these help. Um, there's some capability for parallel processing and looping in them as well. We won't get into that, but just to note that that's part of the custom transformer framework. Okay, that's essentially our introduction before exercise one. Uh, I think everyone's been able to connect to the CityWorks instance. I just threw this in here as another reminder of grabbing that public IP from, IP from your CityWorks machine. So at this point, uh, let's dive into exercise 1.1. 1. 1. And uh, the, yeah, the, it's a pretty short one. The goal here is really just to create a CityWorks web connection in FME, successfully authenticate to your CityWorks instance. Um, and uh, that's uh, essentially it. Um, I've slotted 20 minutes. Let's take Let's take 20 for this. Uh, it's, uh, if you run into any issues um, with your IP or with CityWorks or with this web connection, um, message me, myself or Sanai. And let's meet back here at uh, 9.43 on your lab clocks. So let's move on to the next exercise, which builds on creating that web connection. And the goal here is to create 
work orders in CityWorks programmatically based on some input Excel data, which we have provided for you in the, the resources. And I've got that link here too. I'll just chat it out again in case you don't have that folder on your computer, on your Striegel lab. Uh, yeah, just a really boiled down case of loading data into uh, CityWorks. So let's take uh, 30 minutes and work through exercise 1.2. We'd like to, yeah, move on to introducing some aspects of uh, FME server before we get on to a server flavored exercise. Okay. So I don't want to dwell here too, too much since the focus of this training is more on authoring solutions rather than administering uh, FME server. Uh, but even as an author, it's important to have some uh, fundamental understanding of FME servers kind of moving parts. So in this uh, diagram here, we can see kind of a layout of FME server and the different components. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a separate admin course you can take to, to dive more into this. Uh, but as, as someone just authoring workspaces and deploying them to FME server and, and creating automations, um, the key components to be aware of are FME engines, which carry out the data transformation processing. And it's actually the same engine that runs behind the scenes in FME Workbench. So when you run FME Workbench, the engine actually does the work that you've laid out with your uh, readers, transformers, and writers. The same thing when a job is run on FME Server. Uh, so those are the engines uh, kind of down here in the yellow and green. There's the FME Server core, which handles things like queuing jobs. So if all the engines are busy, those jobs will wait until an engine's free. Uh, things like schedules and just balancing all the components of FME server is handled by the core. The top layer, client layer, is kind of the web layer. It includes things like the FME server REST API. FME server has its own REST API as well. Uh, it handles the web user interface. It's essentially what you're interacting with when you're uh, in FME server on the browser. Uh, what else to say about that? Yeah, I did want to mention the FME server services, which are also part of this sort of layer here. Um, the services being data download, data streaming, job submitter, notification, KML network link, uh, those being the key ones that affect how jobs run. These services are just different ways of running jobs. Um, the most default kind of standard one being the job submitter service. It really is, as it sounds, uh, just submitting a job, running a job on FME server. Uh, the other service I want to highlight is just the data streaming service. And we'll look at that in the next exercise. And it's just a way of running a workspace, running a job on FME server, where the output from a writer streams back to the browser automatically when that, that job is run. And so you'll see the HTML report that you worked with in the last exercise, you'll see that streamed back to the browser when you run the, the workspace uh, in FME server. Publishing a workspace is a, a, a key feature for getting workspaces from FME desktop to FME server. So to actually make use of the engines and the web services on FME server, those workspaces need to live in a repository on FME server. And once those workspaces are published, they can be run as individual jobs 
They can be orchestrated as automations. So you can add workspace actions to your automations. Uh, these can also be served as FME server apps, which you'll see in the next exercise too. It's possible to upload or publish these workspaces to FME Server directly in the web, uh, FME Server web UI. But typically and historically, publishing happens in FME Workbench using the publishing wizard that's built into Workbench. And we'll look at that in the exercise as well. The publishing wizard walks you through the process of publishing uh, to FME Server, uh, choosing the service, for instance, job submitter and data streaming. And you can also publish web connections up to FME Server. So you'll see that you can publish uh, your CityWorks web connection to FME Server. And to use that publishing wizard to publish to FME Server, you'll actually create a web connection to FME Server right in that wizard as well. And that'll look similar to your uh, CityWorks web connection. So once a workspace is published, you can locate it in the repository, kind of like a folder where it's been published to, and that's set in the publishing wizard. It'll also, uh, you'll be able to see it in this run workspace um, tab here, uh, just by choosing the repository and choosing the workspace. Any uh, parameters that are in the workspace, runtime settings, that have been set up in Workbench can be filled out on this page uh, for Run Workspace. And then you can submit the job with the Run button. So we've been talking a little bit about FME Server apps throughout here and talking about no-code front-end workflows. Uh, that can be shared between users or across an organization. And this is where FME Server Apps comes in. So that Run Workspace interface can be published as an FME Server App so that it can be served to you know, analysts, project stakeholders, even the public, uh, anyone who might need to do some data transformation uh, but doesn't necessarily know about FME or doesn't need to know about the workspace itself running behind the scenes. Uh, so it's a great tool that a lot of organizations do take advantage of. And we've also added some customization ability to those apps so that uh, without any code at all, you can provide a custom banner, custom header, custom footer, uh, color schemes to um, just to sort of, you know, make it a, a, a branded app for your organization. I want to talk a little bit about automations too. This will play more into the scenarios for tomorrow, but uh, just to touch on the technology, automations is a way for data to be pushed to FME server in the form of short messages and have FME server react to those messages by triggering actions, which are typically workspaces, uh, but can also be external actions like sending notifications, like sending emails or uploading files to uh, you know, an S3 bucket or a Dropbox or something like this. Uh, automations are, are uh, kind of made up of two different components, these triggers and these actions. Triggers alert FME server to an event that has taken place either on FME server or from an external application. So this could be an incoming email, even with an attachment that uh, needs processing. It could be a webhook message, which we'll see in our scenarios tomorrow. It could be a file uploaded to a directory as well. Just a few examples of triggers. And actions are either, either internal or external. Internal being typically jobs running, workspaces running. And external actions, as I mentioned, would be notifications like emails or um, yeah, interacting with external systems after this automation has completed. So this is the whole framework for having FME Server take action in response to events, um, external 
to FME server. This is just a, a schematic of the architecture kind of. So just the framework is a sending application, reaching out to FME server, FME server doing its thing, chugging away behind the scenes, and then relaying that message to another service or application. This might be a bit of a more practical slide looking at the same thing and just with automations uh, in there too. Uh, so here we can see um, an incoming email trigger in the green, which kicks off a job, which is the orange icon there. And then depending on the results of the job, different external actions take place. So they're all email actions in this scenario. There's four of them. But uh, it depends which one runs based on the outcome of the workspace. So if the workspace succeeds, the little check output port will fire and that email will be sent. The same for a workspace failing, which is this X. And then these are two custom output ports which can be configured in the workspace. And these can send data from the workspace out into automations. Um, so actual data that you're working with in FME coming out based on a port of your choosing and going downstream to actions like email. Okay, enough about emails. Let's touch on webhooks uh, for a moment. I think this is going to be the key automations trigger for CityWorks integrations in general. And we will dive into this more tomorrow. Webhooks can be a little tricky to describe if they're new. Uh, I think in a nutshell, it's a way to get real-time information sent from one application to another. And it relies on web services or REST API principles. Uh, once an action has been completed by an application, it can send information over the web to another application via a webhook, essentially instantaneously. Uh, so FME server can both receive data from another application via a webhook, or it can deliver data to an application using a webhook. I think we tend to see the former, especially for examples like CityWorks or uh, I think Survey123 is another popular one that lots of FME users take advantage of. Uh, so though, so CityWorks one two three, CityWorks and Survey one two three sending data via a webhook to FME server. Uh, webhooks can be created for a single workspace in FME server, or you can get a webhook URL in a webhook trigger in automations. Just a side note that it's it's worth noting too that FME server can poll applications for data sources or changes. And sometimes that might be the right solution or the only solution. So having FME server check periodically another application for changes. But uh, webhooks allow this more instantaneous responsive approach rather than having a schedule checkup for changes. A little bit more on emails. Uh, just since they're you know, one of the most common protocols and external actions used in FME server, um, FME server's got support for both SMTP and IMAP. Uh, SMTP being the ability to directly receive an email through an email server built into FME server, or indirectly send one out, send an email out through an SMTP service, which could be Gmail could be um, Outlook. I think there's a few other templates built into the email action and automations. And IMAP being uh, an indirect process that connects to an email account on a server somewhere else. All email actions in FME allow configuration of stuff like subject, recipient, body, uh, attachments. And these can all be set dynamically too based on data in the workspace. Uh, and it can be set downstream in an automation um, based on those workspaces. There is also an email tr email or transformer, which you can use directly in, in FME Workbench. 
Um, but in FME server land, it's more the email external action, which you see in blue in the automation. All righty. Um, so let's, I think that's about it for technical overviews of server. We do have another exercise here. Uh, the main goal here to be to modify our existing work order, uh, work order creation workspace, uh, just a tiny bit, publish it up to FME server and explore how we can run it there, finally creating an FME server app out of it. Um, so I've slated 45 minutes for this. We're just about at 11, the top of the hour. So let's work on this for, let's say, uh, 15 minutes. And then we'll take a break and continue on. So let's get started on this exercise 2.1. And I'll check back in at uh, 11 on your lab clocks and we'll just take a bit of a break and then continue. All right, see you in 10. Welcome back everyone to day two of the FME and CityWorks training. This is Nathan here again, and we've also got Sinai online today as a TA and Ryan as well as our host and uh, available for Strigo platform assistance. Thanks so much for joining again. Let's uh, get started. Okay, so just to catch up on the schedule here. So uh, if you'll remember back to yesterday, we started off with an intro to the FME platform. We talked about capabilities, positioning within the landscape, of other software and integration with the CityWorks ecosystem. We also looked at some FME Workbench practical and FME Server practical applications. Today, I'll start off with uh, a bit of a reiteration of a couple of those things, just a few slides of uh, review. And after that, we'll move over into the workshopping portion which is a bit more free form where we'll work on the two scenarios in the CityWorks training handbook. Okay, let's go through a bit of a review of yesterday. We started off looking at enterprise integration with FME and kind of how to talk about and describe the capabilities of FME the solutions that the platform provides. Um, so we can talk about it in terms of you know, formats supported, functionality provided by transformers, industries that we work in. But as we move towards this notion of enterprise or application integration, it does start to make sense to talk about FME more in terms of these two patterns here, which are data integration and application integration. And we looked at data integration specifically, and we defined it as bringing together data from disparate sources in a unified view to create data sets with valuable and usable information. So we talked about how data integration breaks down data silos, enables cross-department workflows, allows us to work with or migrate from legacy systems, and results in new information products that team members can use to make decisions. We also talked about how FME is moving more into this space, which is application integration, solving the problem of allowing data to move between systems at an application level automatically. We talked about how this can help maintain manage and keep all your applications or systems in sync, how it can alleviate issues like data duplication or redundancy, and how it can improve efficiency by automating business logic and processes. 
and how it can help break down application silos. You might recall as well these generalized categories that we can use to talk about FME and CityWorks use cases and how FME fits in to solve these uh, common problems. We took a look at a few examples uh, of recent projects done by both CityWorks and SAFE that fall into some of these broad categories. This includes a, a live demo of a citizen reporting app that's on safe.com slash demos. It also has a tutorial and that's an example of web apps and forms primarily since it's all based on FME server apps and um, FME hitting the CityWorks API underneath. And we looked at a few examples from CityWorks. Uh, one was a, a legacy data migration workflow. So loading legacy work order data, about 10,000 records into a new CityWorks instance using FME. And also a workflow automation built around uh, tree encroachment on power infrastructure. We looked at the competitive landscape and how FME fits into it. Um, some of the main things we talked about here are just that these different spaces of tools that um, sometimes overlap, <clears throat> sometimes the tool them tools themselves span across different uh, areas of expertise. So some of our main, <clears throat> excuse me, competitors are, you know, in some of the same circles as us or just outside. FME in particular started off strong in the early days in data integration, but now tends to kind of straddle these two um, areas of data integration and application integration. So FME tends to be a great choice as a solution if you have standard data and ETL, data migration ETL use cases, but also have requirements for uh, system integrations. Just a quick exercise recap. We looked at a few exercises where we created a CityWorks web connection, created work orders in CityWorks using the CityWorks REST API in FME Workbench via a custom transformer. And we set up a data streaming workspace and created a, an FME server app to, to run that workspace. That's about it for review. Uh, so today will be more of a workshop and I'll just introduce some of the scenarios and um, just show a bit of a gotcha for scenario one. And then we can dive into those. Um, let's just go here. <clears throat> just to talk about the scenarios kind of at a broad uh, level first. Um, the technologies we're going to look at for these scenarios are CityWorks webhooks and FME server automations in the first one. And the second will be more of a database change detection um, scenario. And FME schedules will play a role in that. There'll be some other, you know, nitty gritty technical things going on in these scenarios. This is outlined in the training manual, things like you know, working with log files, working with JSON, there'll be an email notification in there as well. Um, but uh, these, yeah, these are the main sort of technologies uh, to keep in mind for today. For scenario one, the overall business goal is to automatically add a new task sorry, add a task to a new work order and send an email notification upon completion. Pretty simple uh, business case. There are a number of moving parts involved. Um, and in the manual, you'll, you'll find some tips and best practices uh, as you work along in this one. Um, and at this point, um, I will let you go. I've slated about 90 minutes for this exercise. Let's uh, start out working on it for about 45 minutes. 
Hi folks, just checking back in here. It's 10.30. Uh, I want to just really quickly introduce scenario two. It's really just like a 30 second spiel here. And then we can continue on. You can keep working wherever you're at. Um, it'll be essentially scenario work until just before the wrap up at the end of the course. Um, so scenario two, just broadly, the goal here in this scenario is to work with the CityWorks database, or at least it's a stand-in for the database. It's actually a Postgres database, uh, and work with employee records. Um, the goal is to update CityWorks employee records based on uh, the example of a master employee data set that's stored externally. So syncing the databases here. So in this scenario, you'll explore kind of mixing database level data integration with REST API interactions. So we'll still be using the CityWorks REST API. And yeah, we'll look at a little bit at database change detection in FME in this scenario. And also FME server schedules inside an automation instead of a webhook trigger. So yeah, the main goals here, work with databases and change detection, update and create employee records in CityWorks using the REST API, and create an FME server schedule automation. So let's keep working here now. I've got a few quick slides on a wrap up, and uh, Ryan has got a word on feedback and the quiz for the course as well. So I'll just uh, jump into that now. So what did we cover in this course? We covered FME platform positioning, talking to customers, partners, colleagues within your organizations about how our technology fits into the enterprise and why it matters. We covered core platform capabilities, including using FME for both data and application integration. So we touched on how to automate workflows in FME server, and also how to just handle the data and the nitty gritty details in FME desktop. We also covered authoring real enterprise integration problems or solutions to those problems rather with a focus on CityWorks. There's probably something we missed. We can't cover everything in the training course due to time constraints and infrastructure complexities, but we definitely wanna keep improving this course. So some things that I know we didn't cover are database triggers and things like stored procedures. Obviously those exist in the wild, they're a bit difficult to train on. We also didn't cover application integration with multiple applications. Again, it's a bit difficult to set that up in a, in a training environment. If there's anything else, let us know in the training feedback. We'd love to hear from your perspective. Besides myself and the rest of the customer success team here at, uh, at Safe Software, there are plenty of resources out there for a bunch of the topics we covered today. Um, I thought about putting together a list of, of links, but there's so many. I just wanted to highlight kind of the three main avenues to get knowledge on FME capabilities. Of course, there's safe.com. We've got pages on industries, on platform capabilities. We have live demos and also training and webinars. There's always the FME community, which has plenty of tutorials and how-to articles. There's the forum as well for asking questions and uh, engaging with the user base at large. There's live chat for quick help and documentation, of course, as well. 
And then there's CityWorks uh, on the same, by the same token, there's a CityWorks uh, community. Just to, uh, to point that resource out as well. Just a thank you to everyone for your participation. Thanks also to Sinai and Ryan for facilitating the course. And I'm gonna hand it to Ryan now. Uh, stay tuned, he's just got a word on feedback and the quiz for the course.